Right off the bat, I have to say that we are not going to be using regular old table salt in our aquariums. Why? Not because of the iodide that's in here. Some people might think that that's actually okay for fish, but because regular table salt can have dextrose in it, which is actually sugar. And it can also have sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. And if you don't know what baking soda does in your tank, it can rapidly raise the pH in your tank water which is very detrimental to fish. It's also got something called yellow proyacate of soda. I don't know what that is. So you never want to put table salt into your tank. Save this for the steak and eggs. A very powerful breakfast, by the way. Anyway, what we are going to talk about are the three most common types of salt used in aquariums, which is aquarium salt, Epsom salt, and finally, cichlid salt. And yes, these are all three different types of salts that do three different things. Before we dive in, if you're new here, my name is Kev, and on this channel, I try to make helpful aquarium content. So if you like what you see, give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Another thing I have to let you know right away is that this video is not gonna be about dosing amounts for what type of salts into what type of tanks, because those numbers are different for everybody. Some fish can tolerate salt much more than other fish, so that's why when you search for these numbers on the internet, you get wild variations because no one number is correct. Except for when I'm talking about cichlid salt, there is a number for that, but we'll get to it. Now, if you keep live plants in your tank, you're not gonna wanna use salt. If you got invertebrates or scaleless fish, you might not even wanna mess with salt at all in your tank. That's risky. Another thing that you must know is that salt of any kind does not evaporate with the water in your tank. Any amount of salt that you ever dose into your tank is going to remain in your tank. And the only way for you to get it out of there is with your scheduled water changes. It needs to be diluted. So if you're going to consistently dose salt for whatever reason, you want to dose your salt for the volume of water of the water change, not for the volume of water of your entire tank. I hope that was clear because that's pretty important. And I might know what some of you are thinking. So before you go crazy, let me just say this. The use of salts in our freshwater aquariums is a very controversial topic in our hobby. There's some people that will never use any kind of salt whatsoever. I will never. And there's some people that swear by its functions and abilities. It's the best. I love it. So keep that in mind while I go through each one of these salts. I personally am on the side of knowing what each one of these salts do and using them correctly when needed to help your fish. So here we go. Aquarium salt is very well known and commonly used for a lot of things. What it's marketed for is to add electrolytes into your water to improve gill function and help your fish basically breathe better underwater. But what I like to use it for is for disease prevention and treatment. But that being said, let me say right off the bat, this is not something that I usually use on the regular every day or every water chain. As a preventative, I could say I use aquarium salt maybe every other month or every two months. Aquarium salt is very well known for attacking any external issues on your fish bacterial, fungal, or even parasitic. If you don't know about their slime coat, it's kind of our fish's protective barrier against anything external. And aquarium salt is going to help trigger the production of that slime coat. Now, many people think that aquarium salt only contains sodium chloride, like your regular table salt, but there's a lot more stuff in here. So much that I can't even remember. If you really want to know what they are, it's calcium chloride, calcium sulfate, magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfate, potassium chloride, and finally, sodium chloride. Yes, those are a lot of scientific elemental terms, but those are the salts that are in aquarium salt. And then there was Epsom salt. And Epsom salt is gonna be used in an entirely different way than we use aquarium salt. Even though you might pick up on what's actually in here, Epsom salt is used as a laxative. This is going to help your fish poop when they cannot poop, either due to constipation, maybe they might have bloat, especially with African cichlids, they could have Malawi bloat. Um, this is gonna help with swim bladder disease, dropsy. It's gonna help clean and clear out their digestive tract, which is very beneficial for fish. Now with Epsom salt, some people do like to dose the tank directly, but it's more primarily used in a bath, meaning that you dose a five or a 10 gallon tank with your Epsom salt, put the fish in there for five, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Again, I'm not giving you ranges because it differs for every species. Most of the time, if your fish has a digestive issue, they will go ahead and poop in that bath. You'll see 
the poop come out of them that has been stuck in them for so long. And once that happens, you can take them out of the bath and put them back into the main tank. This bag of Swan Epsom Sol is just whatever brand my local store had. The only thing you want to keep in mind when you buy Epsom Sol is that it doesn't have any extra additives in there. Nothing with some weird scents or flavors, just 100% magnesium sulfate. And that's what's in here, 100% magnesium sulfate. Now, you might have noticed that there is some magnesium sulfate in aquarium salt as well. The only difference is it's in a very small amount in the aquarium salt and in the Epsom salt, this is 100% magnesium sulfate. And then we've got your Seachem Cichlid Lake Salt, primarily used in African cichlid tanks because the salts and minerals found in here are similar to their natural environment, the Rift Lakes of Africa. These minerals are very beneficial to African cichlids and they also help to increase the GH or the hardness of the water for African cichlids. Seachem also makes an American cichlid salt which is primarily used for, you guessed it, American cichlids. This salt mimics the water parameters of the South American and Central American waters. Now many people have believed, including myself, that even though this is named salt, that it's not really salt because it's got a very small amount of sodium chloride, what is actually salt. But upon further research, this is loaded with a whole bunch of different kinds of salts. Let me tell you what they are. Magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, potassium sulfate, sodium chloride, aluminum sulfate, iron sulfate, potassium iodide. These are all different kinds of salts, some organic, some inorganic, but they're all salts. So yes, cichlidae salt is salt. It just doesn't have as much sodium chloride as the aquarium salt does. This salt is something I do use during every water change along with uh, cichlid trace because these minerals may not all be found in my natural tap water. But these African cichlids thrive on these minerals. Fish don't just get their nutrition from the food they eat, they also absorb minerals and nutrients from the water itself. And in between water changes, these minerals can easily be depleted, especially if you got a big full overstock tank. But just like all of the other salts, this also does not evaporate with water. You want to make sure that you're only dosing for the amount of your water change, not the entire volume of your tank. I said it twice. Now that you know the differences between these three salts, I have to let you know that none of them are actually essential. You use them as needed, when you need them, not automatically even the cichlid lake salt. They don't 100% need to have these beneficial minerals, but if you want your fish to thrive, they should have them. Now let's say you did decide to use some salt for whatever reason. How do you remember how much salt you dosed? When did you dose it? What tank did it go in? You could decide to write it down on a notepad or a book that you might never see again, or you can track everything you do to your tank in the Aqua Builder app. This app is gonna track anything you dose, how much you dosed, and when you did it. You can also set up reminders to let you know when's the next time you need to do something on your tank. Check that video out right there. It's gonna give you all the information on the Aqua Builder app. Updates are coming out soon. The app is getting better every single day. But before you go, if you like this video right here, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I will see you on the other side. Peace.